Oh, welcome in a post victory Monday here on Philly Voice Sports Bet. So we appreciate you hanging with us. Us, of course, Devin Caney, Harry Mays, I'm Aton Shander, Matt Cherico is producing. And yes, we will look back what went right, what went wrong, not only from the micro Philadelphia Eagles level, but also across the entire weekend. Some big wins, some tough losses, I'm sure. And as always, today's show brought to you by Rita's. Go candy crazy with Rita's new Candy Kapow Ice. And new app users get a free ice when they download and use offer code SWEET. Stop by your local Rita's today and try it before it's gone. Offer expires September 4th. Be cool, Rita, Rita. All right, let's start with the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll bounce around, see what we got right, some things that maybe jump out. Also, some things that maybe you see that we can continue to either bet or fade in the sense of the birds and, and maybe even their opponents coming up in Minnesota. And then we'll look around the NFL, of course, maybe even some college, depending on how bad it was for Harry. So let's start. The Eagles get a victory, right? They get a win. They don't cover the line. <laughs> Where do you want to start there? They don't cover the line. They look fine on offense, but Jonathan Gannon basically showed up with the game plan of, yeah, okay, they're Detroit. We're, we'll be okay. I mean, other than that, I don't even know how to describe that. So, Devin, Harry, take a shot I, however you want. I will jump in here because uh, I had myself a fabulous weekend when it comes to NFL bets as a whole. Uh, I want to talk about that Thursday night game because I wasn't on last Friday with you guys. Okay. Uh, but first, Eagles. Uh, so I think I told you guys on Wednesday I wasn't touching that spread because I just felt like I hadn't seen enough from the Eagles to confidently you know, say that they'd cover. I did place money on any time touchdown by Eagles defense because when it comes to Jonathan Gannon and the Eagles defense, I knew all I could trust was not Gannon and his scheme, but the Eagles secondary. I knew that backfield had the potential to get a pick six. And what did they do last night or yesterday afternoon, I should say? James Bradbury got a pick six. So uh, I was super excited about that. Not super excited about Jonathan Gannon's defensive scheme, though. No, no. And and look, we talked about that actually on Monday, right? The, the Kenny Gainwell anytime TD. And that brought up the conversation because you brought up the Eagles again on Wednesday. And I think the books cut off the special teams, right? So you yes, could yes, right. right. So it was crazy because Monday the bet was defense special teams. And then Wednesday it was like, wait a second. And we were going back and forth. And I remember Cherico came in and, and kind of clarified that. So mm -hmm. sharp in the sense of you didn't – like initially Monday, we talked about a couple of anytime TDs and that's when the DST came up, but mm -hmm. then you don't even have the benefit of the special teams in that one. So it hits and yeah, absolutely. And look, Gainwell's going to be involved, Harry, as we know too. So there were a couple of big ones there. The spread was something that you and I were going back and forth on for like the past, maybe since the inception of the show. Right. Yeah. I figured the Eagles could cover a three and a half, four point line. And they end up getting backdoored uh, because Jonathan Gannon, you know, just cannot stop. Oh, uh, Harry froze like Gannon's game plan. Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, he was like running all over the Eagles like they were Georgia Tech back in the day when he was uh, when he was a bulldog. But yeah, they can't stop the run. Um, the offense, you know, would put up points. I figured AJ uh, Brown would have a big debut. I figured that they would want to target him and get him heavily involved. And man, he looked he looked a little bit like To to me. In some of those, he's so Dang. big and strong and so tough to bring down. He loves contact. He is going to be a player and that every Eagle fan is already in love with him. Don't get me wrong, but he's going to be a guy. If he can stick around here a couple of years, he's really going to be uh, could be an all timer as far as a wide out uh, for the Eagles. I love, you know, just love watching him play. And he's just a guy that just he will not be denied. If the football is being thrown in his area, he's getting it. And, you know, he's and he tries to score on every freaking play. I just I just love it. So that was cool. I didn't have any action really on this Eagles game. I wanted to sort of sit back and see what they looked like. And, you know, uh, the quarterback had some flashes. He had the brilliant throw to A.J. Brown where he dropped it right in his right in his hands. But outside of that, I think he gives up on plays too quickly. He just so loves to just take off and run with it. And I, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of, you know, growth yet in this in this first game. Now, we'll see how the season plays out, of course. I'm willing to give him, you know, the whole year. But, uh, you know, outside of that one great throw, I was like, eh, a little bit, eh, on the quarterback. 
I, I didn't put any money on AJ Brown. I wish I did. I did get a message from my friend saying uh, the over in total yards by AJ Brown uh, was the easiest bet in the history of bets. I'm go. not wrong about that. But looking ahead when it comes to AJ Brown, because he didn't get a touchdown in yesterday's game, I think he's really hungry for one. So I might put money on anytime TD Monday by night AJ Brown for, for Monday night. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, I think that's a good angle. Uh, yeah. I really, I think both guys actually become good plays here one in aj brown because you're right there's that sense of he was hovering and you grab 10 balls with that number that line it's almost a shock right that there isn't a one after that at least mm -hmm. for a touchdown so i'm with you Devin. i think also i'm interested to see what minnesota does to really heavily i would imagine shade aj brown which is always going to leave something open for Devontae Smith if he's one-on-one. -on -one. So that's another guy. Like, people, let people put money on Goddard because it's probably going to be the easier one in their mind, but probably less value. I think because Smith was taking a back seat to Brown, and I'll try to find if there's an any time up there now for week two, but those, absolutely. I love the Brown call, Devin, and I think uh, I'm going to add Devontae Smith in there as well as two guys who can do it. Let me just throw something real back to both of you because, Harry, you're not alone in this, I mean, I've, I've heard people since 5.30 in the morning mention the same thing that you've said, which is he didn't really make any throws that had me like, wow, outside of the big one to Brown. Except the one, yeah. Right, so I'll ask I'll ask both of you because, I, and Devin, I'm not putting you in that position of what Harry said. I'm just saying this is the open-ended question. And, yeah, it's leading, and, yeah, I'm going to lure you and all that shit, right? But but understand where I'm coming from, which is not just a basic, ah, nah, nah, but, I mean, there's depth to it. Wouldn't you rather see him, especially if there's something else that's causing the play to break down, do what he did than Mac Jones, this sucker, or, you know, even worse, Josh Rosen, this sucker, and just throw the football, just, just get rid of it as fast as you put. And then what's that interception, right? That's batted balls, that stuff like that. So yeah, he didn't look like Tom Brady, but at the same time, the, I thought the decisions he made were intelligent ones, even if they weren't throws. Does that make sense? And does that kind of add up? Yeah, I mean, I think it says everything you need to know that the Eagles didn't turn the ball over once yesterday. Um, I think Jalen Hurts, uh, you know, he's always been a grinder. He's always been strong mentally. He's going to do everything he can to win. So I agree with you, H. I'm like, I don't. It wasn't like a hundred percent or like, like I wouldn't give him like a nine out of 10 on his performance, but it could be a lot yeah. worse. I suppose I, for me, most of my criticism come uh, falls on the defense and Jonathan Gannon, because how could it not? Right. I didn't think the yeah, offensive like, line looked good either. No, it I mean, didn't. I'm expecting them to dominate. Yeah. You know, yeah. look, they still ran though. Like, yeah. like they were able to put up yards on the ground. Miles Sanders had a day, but look, I, I don't want to overstate Harry, what Devin said, because a win is a win. You get a victory on the road. A lot of people are upset that they didn't cover that line. I get it. I get it. But look, the glaring issue is something that's going to come back week in and week out, especially if they are able to just slam dunk this division with Dak out six to eight. But right. I mean, the defensive coordinator, you can make the same argument for Jalen Hurts as you can for Gannon. They beefed up talent. They gave him all the keys. Right. They said, this is a year where you can prove yourself, right? You can apply that to Hurts or Gannon. Yeah. Gannon looked lost. Well, once I like again. the fact that they blitzed a lot because that was one of the things that we were always bemoaning last year. I mean, putting pressure on the quarterback. He saw a quarterback that is obviously Goff in his history is a guy with a very clean pocket can can really you know throw the football, but any kind of commotion around him and he's he's just a mess. So I think that was the idea. Let's let's put a mess around this guy and see if he can deal with it. So that I like the fact that they got just sliced and diced on the ground is a concern, though. Yeah, I mean, DeAndre Swift is really talented. He's a talented running back. Um, but that's not to say that this Eagles defense isn't talented enough to sure. stop that. Yeah, uh, it was a head scratcher for sure. And that's what especially I think it was once uh, the Eagles acquired CJ Gardner Johnson, who's like the final piece of the puzzle where for me, the pressure shifted from, um, I mean, the pressure is always going to be on Jalen Hurts because it's always on the quarterback, but also more so to Jonathan Gannon because it's very similar, Harry, like you mentioned, similar situations where now they both have the talent that they need to succeed. Uh, will they do that? And Jonathan Gannon failed that test at least yesterday. So. By the way, that was me who said it, not Harry. Oh, yes. sorry. Sorry. Credit. I will take credit for everything, though. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And, and here's the thing. It's not so much that I'm vain, which which I am. I get it. But it's credit Harry. I know. 
Harry Devin would not step in and say, by the way, that was Shander. Absolutely like, Harry not. Would just let it ride and <laughs> take credit for that. Yeah. And it sounded good. Would have post that. It sounded good. Yeah. yeah. You know, favorites <laughs> nine, four, and one yesterday, straight up, and they were seven and seven uh, against yeah. the number. How about that? Are those guys good or what? They're pretty damn good. They're and and damn there's going to be sharp. some opportunity, I think, tonight, by all means. But let's look back at this. I know Devin is bursting at the seams here to talk about Thursday night. We also have Saturday, a couple of big ones, a couple of small mm -hmm. ones, right, where I think you might have to take a lump on that pit game, yeah. Devin, unfortunately. But that's fine. That's fine. So so let's look at this, right? I'll start because I'll, I'll just explain kind of what I'm saying. It's, it's simple, right? What went right? What went wrong? Pick the best thing you want that went right. Pick the worst thing you think that went wrong. You know the spreadsheet, et cetera, et cetera. It was that six-leg teaser, six-leg, six-point teaser. New England effed me four mm. times over. They blew. I was five of six on that one. Like, they blew a 2-1 for me. Dallas yeah. lost, okay. The Jags lost, okay. But the New England loss, I thought, was truly – just disappointing because ultimately they the Dolphins were held under their team total of 24 and a half like Belichick did enough but that offense is atrocious Mac Jones gets hurt etc that absolutely killed me smashed me the big one for me was the half unit on the Steelers and the full unit on them covering and just watching that, oh, that game was like, unbelievable vested interest watching that game so yeah that's I mean, what went right and what went wrong for me. Yeah, you got that great touchdown to Chase at the end of the regulation there, and then they blocked the extra point. Then the field goal kickers are missing in, in overtime. It was unbelievable. Great weekend. The 1 o'clock window for the NFL delivered a hell of a lot of drama. Uh, that witching hour that um, Hanson talks about on the on the red zone was was in full effect on Sunday. Yep. What went right for me? What went wrong? I'm going to you know be crowing about that Vikings pick because it was brilliant. And they absolutely made you know Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers wants to cut every receiver on the roster. OK, he wanted to do it in the first quarter. How about the look he gave when he had that guy wide open? He throws a great pass and the dude drops it. Now he wanted to kill him. So it was great. There's dissension among the Packers. I absolutely love it. Minnesota was, was a great play. The one that was not was I tailed the sheep on Friday with Me them too. damn Dallas Cowboys, and Me they too. suck. Okay? You know, now Dallas – or Dak got hurt, but it didn't matter. He was playing like shit to begin with. Okay? Wait, wait they're, you guys both terrible. bet on the Cowboys? Yes, I took well, the we, Cowboys. Okay. Here's the thing. That's illegal in Philadelphia. You can't I am not a panderer to the Philadelphia audience. I couldn't care less. It's all about <laughs> money. Voice bets. I believe that's part that's of right. Name. It doesn't say <laughs> Eagles voice bets. It says Philly <laughs> voice bets. Fine. Let, let me say this though. We had a guy like we had. Is it fair to characterize the the man who helped at least facilitate, if not orchestrate, the Tim Donaghy scandal, mm -hmm. if you will, right? Yeah. Like Jimmy Batista, the sheet, like th this is as good as it gets as far right. as a capper, as far as somebody like he was the man who was basically mate facilitating all of the bets with Donaghy and all the big money there. So he came on our show, Devin, with a couple of other guys to talk about the untold uh, Netflix documentary on Friday when you were off. And he gave out at the end what his like big bag pick of the week his stick so, pick of the week stick pick, yeah. right so who, who are we to disagree with the right. guy who was you know moving two balloons during the donaghy scandal that's all <laughs> yeah i took a lot of heat for that too yeah me too yeah. me too so um well my uh, so back to thursday night yeah. uh i don't know if you guys know i'm like an unofficial member of bill's mafia of course yes. birds will always be number one but um i don't know i i feel like a kindred spirit with bill's fans so i uh, they're also my future pick to win the super bowl this year um so i had several bets on that game i had josh allen for two or more passing touchdowns plus a bill's win and then also the under in total points scored in the first quarter uh, at nine. And nice. they all hit. And the Bills won. I was so excited. Uh, Bills Mafia all the way. I'm going to jump through some tables this season. <laughs> yeah, they look pretty Please dominant. do that on this show if you, if you, or at least let us stream it and use right. it. Yeah, I was absolutely. caught on record on the radio saying that if, because uh, the Bills and Eagles are like my dream Super Bowl matchup. I'm not saying that's going to happen this year necessarily. But if that happens, I will jump through a table on camera. Yeah, and um, they didn't even play their best game by far no, with all the turnovers. No. Mm -hmm. And they still just manhandled uh, the Rams. I tell you, I mean, 
It's crazy. Now you watch the Rams look really good in week two. Yep. You watch. Yeah, they will. They yeah, will. Yeah. Absolutely. And I may have something for you week two already here. By mm -hmm. the way, real quick before – oh, wait. What went wrong, Devin? I'm sorry. Oh, what went wrong? Uh, college football, I bet Pitt money line over Tennessee. It was, um, it was looking hopeful there for a second, but mm -hmm. – in, in, uh, They were up 17-7. Yeah, wow. ultimately, uh, quarterback with, got injured and they they couldn't pull out a win. So, wait, what a lie! And the kicker stinks. He was going to be fired up after the backyard brawl, but uh, yeah. maybe next week. Their kicker stinks too. Not great. Watch, watch out for that. That's something yeah. That's that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I mean that's why three is really no longer even a key number in college because teams yeah. are good with bad kickers and they just they don't kick as much. What a weekend! Think about what a weekend it would be. For like the average Pitt Pittsburgh Steelers fan, right? Mm -hmm. Like you go through just this gut wrenching loss to Tennessee on Saturday, and then you come back to like the same scenario, except you're on the other side of it. Different way to get there, but what a weekend. Real quick, I, I want to throw this out here because I'm looking at the division winner. Dax out six to eight weeks. The Cowboys are now five to one to win this. The Giants are plus 490 and the commanders are four to one so the eagles are a heavy minus 130 favorite and rightfully so I, i'm not going to have any you know like there's no justification for taking the eagles etc at this point at minus 130 but there are two angles you can go with this right you can do the obvious which is well Dak's going to be back in six weeks and i don't know don't worry dallas is much better than washington and new york and i'm sure Devin is, is just hating to hear this right now you could technically bet dallas at five to one to win the division, or you could say maybe it's Washington, maybe it's the Giants, and take the value that you're probably not going to get because Dallas is going to lose some games, and one of those two in Washington and New York are going to win some, and that's going to drop below four to one. So I don't know if anything jumps out to either of you, but no. I mean, I, I would not take Dallas regardless of that. Their yeah. offensive line looks terrible, and uh, it, I just, I just think there's watching a game last night it was like wow this team they're they're just awful i mean offensively they're just awful mm. um and they you know they went from having so much you know firepower to now having next to nothing their offensive line as i said is a mess so i would probably throw something maybe on the commanders if i had to 400 that's a four to one bet yeah yeah, I would too. You know, leading up to to week one, I I kept saying don't count out the Commanders, which I felt like, especially in Philadelphia, a lot of people were doing. Like Carson Wentz, we talk about him like he's some wash up quarterback. He's not elite, but he's also not terrible. So, and we saw that yesterday. Oh so, my god. Um, yeah, I would say, and like if Eagle, if we're just looking at the Eagles from a bias point of view, like we should not count out the Commanders. I think they're yeah. definitely going to be. Um, the, the hardest team we have to face in the NFC East at least this season. How about Wentz doing throwing one of those you know, like patented interceptions in that game where yep. you're like it was like that the game last year when he was with the Colts, right? Uh, that crazy interception late in the year that really doomed him. And then a couple plays later, he's just he looks brilliant. Mm. I mean, it's just it's a total one eighty. That game was crazy. He's he's the ultimate ham and egger, right? Mm -hmm. Like the guy could go two quarters and just look like he doesn't belong in the NFL and then hit you with a couple of throws, keep you in a game and, yeah. and lead a drive that's flawless. Like a big tackle and run yeah. or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, he's... And, and you're like, what the hell? Like, yeah. what is that? But it still uh, sounds weird to say commanders. I'm not used oh, to I it. it. I'm never going to get used to it. I don't like it. I agree. I like their uniforms, but I, I can't get into saying commanders. It's just. I actually okay. prefer Washington football team, I think. I do yeah, too. Commanders? I do I too. Agree. I, I always, I'm going to say commandos at, at some point. I know I'm going to do it. That's fine. I don't think anybody's yeah. going to have an issue with that. Right? Yeah. As long as you're not going commando on the show. Well, that, yeah. That's, it. yeah. It's okay. too much information. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just preempting it in right. case you were willing to share. So, all right, let's get out of here. I've got a couple of things to look at real quick for a Monday night that's going to transfer into the rest of the week here. Is there anything that either of you are looking at for Maction? through Thursday night football, through even an early week to look ahead. Told you I got the Eagles at minus two and a half last week. So anything at all that you're looking ahead at right now that you just want to get in front of? Not for this weekend, but for Monday night football, uh, I was really struggling with what my best bet would be for tonight. Um, it's not super sexy, but I think just DK Metcalf, anytime touchdown. It's not I bad. Don't know. I don't know what to expect. I know everyone's saying Broncos all the way. Like, I don't even know yeah. if I feel confident. What's the number on that? 
Six and a, oh, what? on, uh, on DK? DK. Plus 200. Okay. Yeah. That, Look, that's I, I, I actually huge. like that because I think if you are going to play a Metcalf prop, the most likely, even though it's probably not reflected in the return at plus 200, 205, is that he catches a touchdown. Like, it's hard to gauge how many receptions he's going to have. Yeah. Lockett, I think, is easier to play as a volume guy. Metcalf, not so much. So I, I think there's yeah. a good angle there for sure, Devin. Primetime underdogs are 60 and 44 against the number in the past, uh, what, two seasons, I believe. There's like almost 90% uh, of the bets on DraftKings are on the Denver Broncos. The line Second is now heaviest public team of the week. Moved up to seven. And I'm going to take a contrarian uh, take here. I'm just taking Seattle plus the seven and holding my nose. Uh, I don't I think gotta, you have to. You don't think so? No. Okay. You, you ready for this? Yeah. Favorites are 1939 and one against the spread since 1980 in the first Monday night football game of the season. Wow. It drops to 1231 and one against the spread with totals 41 plus. We're dealing mm. with what a 44 and a half, right? Yeah. Denver is 310 and two against the spread in their last 15 Monday night football games. Yeah. All three trends are working together. Now you need something like you need a grow lamp. You need something to actualize that and make it work. Yeah, Denver's four and eleven. Staff. They're four and eleven against the number on road on the road on Monday nights are the Broncos. No. And no, Seattle Seattle's 26, 10, and one against the number at home in the month of September. Look, everybody got to focus on the quarterbacks, Gino yeah. and Drew. I'm focused on Pete Carroll and how he's going to coach around that. Like, I'll yeah. give him the benefit of the doubt. He knew this was coming. It's not right. like, oh, my God, Russell Wilson left yesterday. Right. Let me add one here before we get out of here. It's a two-leg same-game parlay. I'll hit you with the teaser on Wednesday. No worries. There's plenty of time to get in there. But Seahawks, this is the same-game parlay. So I moved this to plus seven and a half. On the same game parlay on DK, it's at six and a half. So they're forcing you to move it through seven, which is fine. Seahawks plus seven and a half. Noah Fant, anytime touchdown. Ooh. Revenge. That's wow. plus 500, by the way. That's I'm all, I love placing bets based on revenge. I love Isn't it, it amazing, <laughs> right? Yes. yes. Always my favorite. It's a good driving force, vengeance, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be like a sellable Hollywood trade otherwise all right how, how about a look ahead uh you talked about the patriots how they screwed up your weekend a time yeah they're one and a half point favorites at pittsburgh i'm locking in the patriots yeah i think i think that's fine right now i don't know yeah. what mac jones situation is though right yeah like is mac jones gonna miss that game that's probably why that line is so tight i don't think it's because pittsburgh has found some new life i think there's major concern right about mac jones he didn't come back in that game mm -hmm. so I don't know. If anything, I might tease Pittsburgh up, but that's a different conversation for a different story. I like Something it. We'll, to look we'll at. End on that. Yeah, yeah, we'll end on that one by all means. Look, Seahawks, I think for the most part, even with Devin on DK Metcalf, this is going to be somewhat of a game. We'll see. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks again. Thanks to Matt for producing. Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe. It's Philly Voice Sports Best.